welcome back everybody i'm chris christensen podcaster with politics out west please like and subscribe these videos if you'd like and we're going to learn today about the populist party platform of 1896 and we're going to see how did the populist party platform of 1896 uh, differ or build upon the 1892 platform. If you watched our previous video, we uh, read the Omaha platform, also known as the 1892 platform. By 1896, the Populist Party had changed quite a bit, and the 1896 platform is distinguished um, by especially focusing on the money issue. Now, just to kind of relate it to my great-great-grandfather, Omer Madison Kem, who was a Populist Congressman, by 1896, he was pretty much phased out. He was a congressman uh, voted in 1890, 1892, and 1894. But on the 1896 election, Kem had decided to bow out. In fact, he was a little bit um, derided from his own party, as we learned in the biography, because he tended to eventually fuse with the Democrats. Okay, so the big issue of 1896 was this concept of fusion democracy or taking the democratic party and the third party the populist and combining forces to beat the republicans so that was the goal so the populists got behind they knew they couldn't win on their own with their own um, populist party president so they took all of their efforts and they backed the democratic president in 1896 who was William Jennings Bryan, right? We know that name because William Jennings Bryan served his first term in Congress, first and only term as a congressman, alongside William Jennings Bryan. So, or excuse me, alongside Omer Madison Kem, my great-great-grandfather. So William Jennings Bryan and Omer Madison Kem went to Congress in 1890. They were elected in 1890. They went to Congress together. They rode the train together. They even ate pumpkin pies together, which is another story we're going to get to. But... Um, while Omer Madison Kem served a second and then again a third term as an elected populist congressman from Nebraska, 1890, 1892, and 1894, William Jennings Bryan served as a Democrat from 1890 to 1892. Then he went back to Omaha, and where he had a bully pulpit in the Omaha World Herald. He became the publisher of that very powerful newspaper at that time. And then in 1896... Williams Jennings Bryan re-entered the political world by running for the President of the United States. So we're going to read the Populist Party Platform of 1896, see what issues um, are carries over from the 1892 platform. But remember, by this time, Omer Madison Cam had almost not given up on the populists, but he had capitulated to the realization that um, at least a fusion, if not an all-out um, you know, again, capitulation or giving into the, the democratic principles was the best way to go. The third party um, was just a spoiler, as Kem knew. He got very little recognition, as we've learned from his biography. So let's learn about the big picture here. Okay, so this is from a, a, a website, which I'm going to give credit to in the end. But um, this commentary initially is from a Jason R. Jividian, or Jividen, so thank you. Um, and then we're going to read the Populist Party Platform of 1896. So, introduction. In the wake of a national economic depression, the Panic of 1893, the Populist Party tossed its support behind Democratic presidential candidate Williams Jennings Bryant in 1896. Urged on by James B. Weaver, the Populists understood that electoral success was far more likely with Bryan than with a third-party candidate. Many feared that running a populist candidate would only split the free silver vote and hand the presidency to the Republicans. The 1896 Populist Party platform, adopted in St. Louis, Missouri on July 24th, largely resembled the platform of 1892 in its basic principles and policy proposals. Of particular note, however, is the final paragraph of the platform which suggests that the present election will turn on the financial question and invites the cooperation of all parties, organizations, and citizens that agree with the populists on these issues. The platform thus acknowledges that populist electoral success, especially in 1896, might hinge upon cooperation with other interests and parties. And this is a source from National Party Platforms, compiled by Kirk Harold Porter, New York, Macmillan, and all the information is there on the screen.
Okay, so this is the People's Party platform of 1896, or the Populist Party platform of 1896. The People's Party, assembled in national convention, reaffirms its allegiance to the principles declared by the founders of the Republic and also to the fundamental principles of just government as enunciated in the platform of the party in 1892. We recognize that through the connivance of the present and prece preceding administrations, the country has reached a crisis in its national life, as predicted in our declaration four years ago, and that prompt and patriotic action is the supreme duty of the hour. We realize that while we have political independence, our financial and industrial independence is yet to be attained by restoring to our country the constitutional control and exercise of the functions necessary to a people's government, which functions have been basely surrendered by our public servant to corporate monopolies. The influence of European money changers has been more potent in shaping legislation than the voice of the American people. Executive power and patronage have been used to corrupt our legislatures and defeat the will of the people, and plutocracy has thereby been enthroned upon the ruins of democracy. To restore the government intended by the fathers and for the welfare and prosperity of this and future generations, we demand the establishment of an economic and financial system which shall make us masters of our own affairs and independent of European control by the adoption of the following Declaration of Principles. The Finances 1. We demand a national money, safe and sound, issued by the general government only, without the intervention of banks of issue, to be a full legal tender for all debts, public and private, a just, equitable, and efficient means of distribution, direct to the people and through the lawful disbursements of the government. 2. We demand the free and unrestricted coinage of silver and gold at the present ratio of 16 to 1, without waiting for the consent of foreign nations. 3. We demand the volume of circulating medium be speedily increased to an amount sufficient to meet the demands of the business and population, and to restore the just level of prices of labor and production. 4. We denounce the sale of bonds and the increase of the public interest-bearing debt made by the present administration as unnecessary and without authority of law, and demand that no more bonds be issued except by specific act of Congress. 5. We demand such legislation as will prevent the demonetization of the lawful money of the United States by private contract. 6. We demand that the government, in payment of its obligations, shall use its option as to the kind of lawful money in which they are to be and we denounce the present and preceding administrations for surrendering this option to the holders of government obligations. 7. We demand a graduated income tax to the end that aggregated wealth shall bear its just proportion of taxation, and we regard the recent decision of the Supreme Court relative to the income tax law as a misinterpretation of the Constitution and an invasion of the rightful powers of Congress over the subject of taxation. 8. We demand that the postal savings banks be established by the government for the safe deposit of the savings of the people and to facilitate exchange. Railroads and telegraphs. <clears throat> Transportation being a means of exchange and a public necessity, the government should own and operate the railroads in the interest of the people and on a non-partisan basis to the end that all may be accorded the same treatment in transportation and that the tyranny and political power now exercised by the great railroad corporations, which result in the impairment, if not the destruction, of the political rights and personal liberties of the citizen may be destroyed. Such ownership is to be accomplished gradually in a manner consistent with sound public policy. Number two, the interest of the United States in the public highways built with public monies and the proceeds of extensive grants of land to the Pacific Railroad should never be alienated, mortgaged, or sold, but guarded and protected by the general welfare, but guarded and protected for the general welfare as provided by the laws organizing such railroads. 
The foreclosure of existing liens of the United States on these roads should at once follow default in the payment thereof by the debtor companies, and at the foreclosure sales of said roads, the government shall purchase the same if it becomes necessary to protect its interest therein, or if they can be purchased at a reasonable price, then the government shall operate said railroads as public highways for the benefit of the whole people and not in the interest of the few under suitable provisions for protection of life and property, giving to all transportation interests equal privileges and equal rates for fares and freights. Three, we denounce the present infamous schemes for refunding these debts and demand that the laws now applicable thereto be executed and administered according to their interest and spirit. Number four, the telegraphic, like the post office system, being a necessity for the transmission of news, should be owned and operated by the government in the interests of the people. Land. True policy demands that the national and state legislation shall be such as will ultimately enable every prudent and industrious citizen to secure a home. And therefore the land should not be monopolized for speculative purposes. All lands now held by railroads and other corporations in excess of their actual needs should be lawful should by lawful means be reclaimed by the government and held for natural settlers only. And private land monopoly as well as alien ownership should be prohibited. Number two, we condemn the frauds by which the land grant Pacific Railroad companies have through the connivance of the Interior Department, robbed multitudes of actual bona fide settlers of their homes and miners of their claims, and we demand legislation by Congress that will enforce the exception of mineral land from such grants after as well as before the patent. 3. We demand that bona fide settlers on all public lands be granted free homes, as provided in the National Homestead Law, and that no exception be made in the case of Indian reservations when open for settlement, and that all lands not now patented come under this demand. The Referendum We favor a system of direct legislation through the initiative and referendum under proper constitutional safeguards. Direct election of president and senators by the people. We demand the election of President, Vice President, and United States Senators by a direct vote of the people. Sympathy for Cuba. We tender to the patriotic people of the country our deepest sympathies in their heroic struggle for political freedom and independence, and we believe the time has come when the United States, a great republic of the world, should recognize that Cuba is and of right ought to be a free and independent state. The territories. We favor home rule in the territories and the District of Columbia and the early admission of the territories as states. Public salaries. All public salaries should be made to correspond to the price of labor and its products. Employment to be furnished by government. In times of great industrial depression, idle labor should be employed on public works as far as practicable. Arbitrary judicial action. The arbitrary course of the courts in assuming to imprison citizens for indirect contempt and ruling them by injunction should be prevented by proper legislation. Pensions. We favor just pensions for our disabled Union soldiers. A fair ballot. Believing that the elective franchise and an untrammeled ballot are essential to government of, for, and by the people, the People's Party condemn the wholesale system of disenfranchisement adopted in some of the states as unrepublican and undemocratic, and we declare it to be the duty of the several state legislatures to take such action as will secure a full, free, and fair ballot and honest count. The financial question or the pressing issue, 
While the foregoing propositions constitute the platform upon which our party stands and for the vindication of which its organization will be maintained, we recognize that the great and pressing issue of the pending campaign upon which the present election will turn is the financial question. And upon this great and specific issue between the parties, we cordially invite the aid and cooperation of all organizations and citizens agreeing with us upon this vital question. So that is the Populist Party platform of 1896. I'm your host, Chris Christensen, and we're going to stop the video now. And um, please like and subscribe and uh, check out our other videos on populism and um, the history of our country. And if you like, we have our video show live, Politics Out West, 7 p.m. on YouTube, Pacific Time, every Monday through Friday and uh, Sunday night.